Any is it? Let's do it. Fear and five. Greetings, one and all. Welcome back to the RP Geeks. I am Sammy Grayson. Here with me are Ghost of Riddles and Opai Man. Oh, hi. Oh, wow. people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's time for Junior more Duncan Rampa. People. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is now time for the Chapter 3 trial. Trial time. Abilities are unchanged because we keep getting skill points. Yeah. All rise for the class trial. With a basic explanation of the class Thank trial. Thank God the class trials are voice acted. Your votes will determine the results. It is nice. If you can yeah, it's also a lot of fucking talking. I miss, I miss voice acting. So. <laughs> but if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone. Mostly because of that. The and the one that <laughs> That's the reason I love voice acting. But there are other parts where I want to say it. Um, to begin with, we already know who did it. Was that? It was <laughs> was that? He did not have an alibi Just for like when the eh? murders took place, and we found it in that suit. Don't try and deny it. You killed them. All right. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I uh, was the whole time. I don't know anything if I, about it. Can I object to this? Can we at least go over some investigation evidence and all that before we 100% confirm? <laughs> we'll I love the jet my dad called him a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yep, we'll have our, we'll our cross-examination, don't worry about it. was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. It points Quite to compelling. you as having created the suit and Very compelling. while committing crime after crime. A little too compelling, don't you think? How many times do I have to tell you? I Starting a flashback to Legend of Korra. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! <laughs> God, it has been so long since I've seen that. I was re-watching it a couple days ago. Nice. Anything else, we have to make that clear. And here's your first one. Here we go! Make your argument. That's the hero's, hero's message. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit part, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. <laughs> I don't know anything about that stuff. It's not true. It's a conspiracy. Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second. Okay. Fuck. I feel like it. Oh yeah. Everything yeah. You found in your room. The blueprints, the suit cards, they are all. Gotcha. No, it's wrong. No, you're wrong. It's wrong. Well, that's the first. That's the first part. Are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote. Asking Get a load of this. After Alter Ego disappeared. Why are you talking about Alter Ego when Monokuma's right said? fucking there? <laughs> Excellent question. <laughs> He's right there! There's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on. Almost as big as your biceps, Sakura. I tried to change my handwriting anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying you don't think Hero's the culprit? And he is not the only one. I think Hero's innocent as well. What? Uh oh. Then who was in that Robo yeah. Justice suit? Is it like Hero said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. And in of course he passes it off to me. Uh, you, you're a fuck. In the Robo Justice suit. Well, we know who was in the in the Robo Justice suit. You <laughs> 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 It sounded like the weed answer. <laughs> Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit, and we never found any of the your Illuminati. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense. 
You've just said Hero didn't do it. Correct. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Now that's a bold assumption! And what <laughs> reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Well, hey, stop trying to boss us around! <laughs> but that's all he's good at. Order. Mm -hmm. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, mm -hmm. can you tell us what they were? Um, it's a band. You might need to do this in you might, you might need to do this in order. Still one more thing. Oh no, you just need no, you just need both of them. Yep. And the they, don't, they don't need order. Sometimes they do that though, where it's like you need to be in an order. Yep. What's with the attitude? So let's see if I can explain. Papa's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Except... Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. Hmm. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. Mm -hmm. But when the body disappeared, so did the dolly. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the dolly. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? Mm. She's raised an objection. Mm. How do you respond? There is no uh, well, no, you're wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. Ow. <laughs> Motherfucker. Understand what is going on around you. Like, what was that? I wasn't paying attention. Sorry, bro. Uh, I think I'll make. I think I'll get an easier one next time. <laughs> Why the dolly must have been moved. A new element has been added. Uh, reloading. Reloading. Hmm. Yep. Oh, oh this one. Needs. Yep, you gotta reload. Yep. Lock and reload. Lock and load. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. You are a fool. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Final strike. I cannot agree. This should prove it. Uh, 
break. If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheels tread. Eh? Yeah. The killer eh? probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. Mm -hmm. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. Jeez, does Celeste really hate me that much? Well, anyway, <laughs> that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then. What, what the fuck happened? robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. Do tell. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. Mm -hmm. Look at how the body was moved. It'll be clear why the person in the suit couldn't have done it. Uh -huh. What does he mean by that? Well, you've got the evidence. It's right around here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Robo just Robo it. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yeah. The culprit wrapped the body in the tarp, then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? No. Um. That the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah. But even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. Ah! No, it's wrong. <laughs> I remember that one. That's You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. And hit the flow. Wearing that suit, do you think you <laughs> oh God. Low, 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 low. <laughs> you were in the suit, Back Hina. What you said when we were all <laughs> out the suit together, remember? With you at all. I'm you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't I'm telling me. you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't point at the waist. This is a pretty obvious oversight. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well. What's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? The fact you can't see your feet? your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible! Not that I can say for sure myself. Fucking rigid, cumbersome suit. It's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? Mm. Mm. Take it on, you can never take it off. <laughs> Hero's not strong enough. You can never take it off. <laughs> remember... To put it on, you can never take it off. I love the option of just Hero's not strong enough. <laughs> I don't know what's up this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help. Why would you make something that you can't pick off by yourself? I didn't make the stupid friggin' thing! There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then... you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just mm. making it up? One second. Mm. Options. 
There we go. Of course I wasn't making it up. There we go. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Better question is how do you get in? in suit was basically an invitation that is a great for question. To suspect it. Yeah, that's right. Maybe that'll be answered. So, it's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you mm -hmm. forgotten about the picture that I took? You oh, yes. all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? Hifumi? Hifumi. How did you get hurt? That guy hit me. What, what guy? guy? Robo Justice. Uh, that's what I decided to call him just now. So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, <clears throat> without a doubt. Um. Uh... Yeah, that's got to hmm. be right. Hold on a second. It's still far too on. early to reach that conclusion. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Of course. Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. You know, the Ace Attorney method. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this Let's series of picture. unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Sakura agrees. It's a pain in the ass. We get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. I mean, All right, then let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up, so we went to look for everyone. Hey, remember these guys? That They're fucking dead now. Right. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Good times. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were Robo Justice. Our search by Byakuya and Robo Toko, Justice. And then went on to find him Robo in the Justice. Library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office. I saw a shadow. When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that... I saw someone moving around on the third floor, and I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. I commented on Byakuya words about my screen many times. <laughs> and I'm about to again. And I'm about to again. Because it is the most intense screen he will ever hear in his life. <laughs> This fucking song again. And then. And then.
Downstairs, it must have been. Fumi is in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. We split the party. West Hina and I went back to the nurse's office. While Sakura, Byakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. Toko sneezed and became Toko again. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Monokuma was very fucking lazy about office. the other announcements. <laughs> but right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. Hifumi's body has disappeared. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out <laughs> in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. Are we hallucinating all this or something? But when we got there, <laughs> We discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well, if that's true, then hmm. what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can yeah. uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, mm. let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. Hmm. Ah, uh, yep. Contradictions. Contradiction. <laughs> there we go. Bing, 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 bing. Make your argument. Monokuma file number three. Mm -mm. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. No, it's wrong. No, when that's it loads, rule. When it loads up the Monokuma file, that's usually a good indication that you need to grab something. There's no right. usually to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay then, let's see the proof. Hmm. That proves Taka was mm. killed before Hifumi. What time you have he it. must have done? Hmm. We have it. Yes, we do. Fragment gambit. <laughs> but can you spell the word knife? Give me that eye. K. 
Wow. Wristwatch. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> nice miss! <laughs> so it was just a practice shot. <laughs> Hero, why was he zoning out for a solid minute? It must have gotten <laughs> You don't want to. You don't want to know, man. <laughs> the after effects. The after effects of the pub brownies. <laughs> Bloody. Yeah, I know. So but, yeah. after no, he's sending about the now, commentary then he must have that I'm yeah. doing. Six this morning. And that What's up? Be his official time of death. But if that's true, I think I'm related here. Well before uh. Hifumi, and before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around seven. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple hmm. fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. Justice exactly five hammer. The numbers on the <laughs> hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. The fuck with our heads. Now, <laughs> Taka was mm. killed by six. Then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. That may be true yeah. in the case of Taka's murder. But all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Akiba. Akiba. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together. Maddox. Except da -da -da -da. for Hiro and Kyoko. Oh uh, Lord. <laughs> then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. That's totally true. <laughs> you are definitely in the clear, which is funny. Him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on. If that's true, where's the tape? I don't know. Just oh. making stuff up. <laughs> anyway, we all have rock solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Mm. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then. No. She was passed out. Yeah, she's passed no out. Way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. <sighs> Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Wait, I didn't hear her say that. She just said it, damn it! <laughs> in other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared. Kyoko. So they most certainly could have Kyoko. done those things. So what now, Kyoko? 
For now, mm. we well. can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That's true. Mm -hmm. We searched everywhere. This is one of the we bigger mysteries. Figure out how to explain his body disappearing. Well, and the answer is somewhere. Celeste said. He could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. Then the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time. It could seem so. His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Oh man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? Oh. The dead body were to move itself. Ja ja. Ja ja. Oh, the zone. What? No, not another ghost. I don't think it has any. Jesus Christ. I think what she's implying is. We thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality he was still alive. Mm -hmm. Alive? Are you saying he mm -hmm. wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That it isn't possible. The idea that Hifumi was still alive. Is it really possible? Well, here's your chance to prove it! Interesting. Broken wristwatch. Broken wristwatch. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Shortly, you heard the body discovery announcement, along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Mm. Interesting. And remember, two people died. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement, along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. No, it's wrong. No, it's wrong. no, you're wrong. Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. What I say? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that... It's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. <laughs> no, Wait. actually, that was plenty. He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time, which means 
even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. <laughs> if that's true, why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. Second body discovery announcement. Time it was played when we found each body in the nurse's office and the equipment. Second time, then. We took him without a conscience! <laughs> the second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. Ding, ding dong, ding dong. Mm hmm. A body has been discovered. I had to say that part. <laughs> yeah. It's iconic. It didn't seem weird at the time, mm -hmm. but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning, he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. I mean, aside from that. Logic I have ever heard. That was the worst fucking logic I've ever heard. It's genius! Okay, then. Nailed it! Let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Well. There has to be proof that shows if Umu is still alive. I have to find it and show it to everyone. Have it. The answer's so close I can just taste it. Oh, you definitely have it. Zoom his glasses. But well, here's mm. one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved, and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, <laughs> there was no uh, difference. That, on the other hand... Yeah. That's wrong. It took me a second to be like, wait. In fact, yep. there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office in the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us oh. in? Oh. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. Oh. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. Under the trash can. There it is. I got it. <laughs> he found Celeste's account. Cleaning <laughs> featuring a certain cartoon <laughs> mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. The character was... <laughs> Princess Piggles. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this. Yes, that is quite the name. 
Also reminds yeah. me, I didn't I see your point. bring up uh, and Taka and Kifumi's unused executions, did I? Uh, I don't think you did. Using a tacky piece of garbage like that. All right, well, the TLDR is Kifumi gets caught between Monokuma and some other anime character in one of those, like, Power Rangers Megazord-style fights. Oh, nice. <laughs> and Taka is restrained on top of a hood and is basically assassinated. What exactly? What I'm saying is... The blood Bullet his through the head. Was wiped away yeah. his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. Does it? Who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. Mm. It must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? <laughs> if he was just pretending to be dead. What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? No, it was blood. The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! <laughs> oh boy, pack it. <laughs> oh boy, pick lemonade caprice. Three sons. Yama <laughs> Kifumi was still alive at that point, <laughs> the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. Was Kifumi. Taka himself! <laughs> Taka himself, he moves himself. Taka wasn't dead either. Nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Oh, I have so much ice cream now. Now I want ice cream. So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead, and when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, mm -hmm. Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. Da 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 da. He took part da 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 da. Oh. Just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more. But oh, wait, absolutely. there's more. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body. The note. I got it. You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. Just to clarify, Kyoko found it stuffed in his pants. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. yes, in yes. his pants. Okay. In his pants. Forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. <laughs> it's a reminder, don't shove things down your pants, kids. That's how you end up on the news. Yeah, don't. <laughs> and everyone will point and laugh at you and say, hey, that's the guy that shoved X down their pants. Oh, dear. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but I've seen multiple news stories like that. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else. Like for I've now. seen guitars, yeah, chainsaws, lobsters. See, then this note isn't the same. No, I'm not making that up. It's not the same. 
In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero. And that person could only have been... Fumi's pants. Fumi's <laughs> pants! That's right! Taka! Yeah. The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Ah, yes. Fumi's pants. Hello? Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's, what's going on, but Fumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Happy! Um... <laughs> Just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Huffy is Hifumi, right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? <clears throat> Seriously scary. <laughs> Remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. Mm, TikTok. No, it's wrong. No. That's wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong, no, wrong, you're wrong. wrong. No, there absolutely is a connection. What, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> the note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. You've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. Oh, wait, there's more. The equipment room, right? Which is where mm. Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that. No further objections. <laughs> well, that was pointless. Then someone well, that that note what a waste of time. Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave <laughs> it to Taka. What was Hifumi doing with it? Shut down his pants, no less! <laughs> Most likely, Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. The scrap of paper. Mm. Here, I'm gonna shove it right up your fucking throat, <laughs> down your throat. <laughs> I'm gonna shove it in your pants. Take that! <laughs> if I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is. I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi. Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note. Yup. One in the same. They're from the same piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive! <laughs> <laughs> When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. Except for that the one time. The body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. He was killed in the repository, so he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. 
So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! <laughs> you a anyway, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! The weapon? Yeah, because I mean, according to the Monokuma file... The way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But, wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's packed in there good and tight. He's right now. <laughs> I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were in for shit. other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. <laughs> then, uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used uh, to kill the same kind of thing? The same kind of thing. Yeah, well, here we go. Here we go! Mm. What was hammer? Ah, it's hammer. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice mm. Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make it! Murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info. <laughs> <laughs> the murder weapon had to be one of the justice. No, no. No, it's wrong. Really? <laughs> the murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. <laughs> I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones. Some as big as your head. Even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the justice hammers used those as a basis for their design. 
I mean, it was either a basis for their design, or those are literally what the Joker's hammers are. I mean, Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. Whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation <laughs> rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So, so what, he killed himself? That anyone would work together yeah. like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? We talk about how there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to work together. At least that's what we thought at first, but... Hang on. Something bugs me. Make your argument. Mm. Spotless hammer. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Even if no only the one who actually carried out the act can grant you put it in that assuming the rule holds true. It is no, no, you're wrong. Target locked. Target locked. Two murders. It's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, Bork. the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Is that a cork I just heard? <laughs> Naturally, if only one person can be oh. saved per murder, an accomplice mm -hmm. has no risk versus reward benefit. Just spray champagne everywhere. <laughs> I think it's about to start walking together. raining outside. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. Hmm. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. <laughs> And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. What you're saying is they he got played like a damn fiddle. The first murder, so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. Oh. Ah. Yep. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it yep. only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. Oh my god. A suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Nice Which, and tidy. if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. <laughs> That's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice mm -hmm. of accomplice seems odd. <laughs> An effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. It was the main characteristic this time. Toko must have noticed that fact from the very beginning. Which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Yeah. So incident one was Hifumi murdered Taka. But he's dead. He's dead. 
She's it's almost, almost too amazing. amazing. I mean, she is. You it's almost correct. unnatural how good she is. How an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's what we need to find out. Uno right now. True killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions. In the end, murdered him. You have outlived your usefulness. This <laughs> is unfolding. That's a rumbling. Oh boy. Mmm. Mmm. Like so like it's Makoto. Definitely. <laughs> yes, it's, it's me. Makoto. It's me. <laughs> Here's my mm. up. <laughs> it was Celeste. So, oh, Pi, remember what you were talking about earlier? Am I? <laughs> what was it? Remember what you're talking about now? How you yeah. suspected her? A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying then is that I hmm. specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him. That I would go within ten feet of that shit from brains, that lazy, worthless <laughs> idiot! <laughs> oh. uh, 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 just to be clear, <laughs> there is evidence to support it. <laughs> the staff right there. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior uh. that was common only to the two of you. So stupid. Considering so what stupid. we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. I want her to snap again. Really? Mm -hmm. No. Shoot. Right. Oops. Try that again. Countering the suspicious again. individual. The, pa the paper in his Maybe pants. In the paper. <laughs> the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush. The adults are talking now. Huh. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? I saw a shadow. <laughs> We've seen this enough. We okay. headed to the yeah. second floor. I, I only ever say that part. <laughs> to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Hmm. What was it? She, what was it she said? It was. It was. Uh, that is the most intense scream you will ever hear in your life. Hmm. That's what she said every time. <laughs> she said. That's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> No, we went behind me and ran me in the butt. That's what she said. She said. <laughs> it was time for her partner to get to work. And then he let out a blood curdling scream. <laughs> that would be a more convincing one. <laughs> That's what she said. Ew. <laughs> That's terrible. It was to mm -hmm. get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Am I going to be split into two groups? Hmm. <sighs> well.
well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead, You were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I don't believe it! Everything! Mm. The whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? <coughs> I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking mm. back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. Uh, um... Mm -hmm. I must really be frightened and confused. We're all going to die here. We're going to die, just like those guys did. Died. I remember did, died. saying that too. It's one letter off. I don't understand what's so strange about it. Die! Attention. Sakura, die. Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. You <laughs> <hear that, Celeste? laughs> stay with, having stay some with us, man. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? What is he alluding to? Huh. I don't know what he's m he means, but he sounds so cool. <laughs> he must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Oh, shit, wrong way. Fuck. <laughs> I had that backwards. <laughs> oh, should we have to get that again? Yep. You did it the wrong way. Yep. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? There you go. Yeah, that's the problem with having you do these. Is sometimes I get them backwards. Oh, okay. I mean, it's No, you're wrong. I mean, that's exactly what you said, but... That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. 
Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? Imaginations? Imagination. You I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? Uh, hang on, let's address that. How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put yeah. the suit on, and then, then she used the camera's timer to, to set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? Mm -hmm. You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Also, the camera doesn't have a timer. I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. Hang on. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Hang on. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No, huh? there is no other explanation. Other explanations? What's the picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? Other possibility is. Hifumi is a suspect. <laughs> Dancing. <laughs> Who mean the suspect had been drinking? <laughs> been drinking. Well, they'd definitely been drinking. <laughs> yeah. I got it. That's besides the point. Not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. <laughs> That's certainly within the realm She's of like, possibility. She's uh like. -oh. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. <laughs> We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. The reaction the sometimes is the best part of that. Just <laughs> If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. Pretty sus. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this. <laughs> <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. I mean, other than the fact that he had twigs for arms. to educate you. That really possible. Make your argument. Oh shit. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. Then you just draped me across the Fumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. No, it's wrong. <laughs> no, even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Because you can't bend because at the waist. that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. So you really couldn't help but stand up like that. Yeah, you have no choice. <laughs> you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. Hmm. 
I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. Celeste and he <laughs> took the suit they specially designed and stuffed Hero into it. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were able to fit okay. Oh, yeah. Thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit hey. was to blame. <laughs> well, then, That's a new I one. suppose this is checkmate. Oh, oh boy. Checkmate. Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's losing it. Don't make me laugh, you idiot. What do you mean, checkmate? Oh, boy. <laughs> nice face. <laughs> you want to cram me into your little guilty box? Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? I'm trying so hard to hold on to the accent. She's trying. She's doing her best. Tried to kill him. Kill me. That's right. I remember the name. <laughs> Asu. He's strong. When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. In other words, Yasuhiro Hagakure! Yeah. But my name isn't really Yasuhiro! It's actually Taro! Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoto, Jesus. What do you mean by that? I love the metal. Yeah, she'll burn him alive. What else do you think? <laughs> How did you refer to each of us? He said for serious, serious a lot. A lot. <laughs> he gave everyone nicknames. That's right. Our last names. Oh uh, shit. He called us all by our last names. Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Fumi did mean to say Hiro's name. He Example, example. Okay. Um, ogres are like a yes. By chance, he just his first name. Indecent. Indecent. Stop talking. Don't talk. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No, there's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said yeah. doesn't apply to anyone here. Yeah, it does. It applies to one person. Hold on. It applies There's to one, one person. person. Makoto! <laughs> and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. <sighs> what did you just say? Hmm. Think. You'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit! Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather! Yasuhiro is a loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, yes, then a fill little. us in. What's your real name? <laughs> Your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? We'll give up. Then do something to make her accept it. Let's do this. Make your argument. Make your argument. E handbook spammer message. The baby was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Slim Shady. <laughs> 
Okay, God damn it. How long do you plan to go on pretending? <laughs> I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me. Boom. Check me. That's it. The handbook. What? Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. <laughs> this I'm handbook is absolutely <laughs> idle to us. <laughs> I don't have to read this again, do I? You don't. It's it, really you don't. Okay. It's a flashback, you don't have to. Right. I mean, sometimes it's fun too, so but to that one right. <laughs> it's fun. I'm just like, I don't really need to. That one was from so long ago. <laughs> Good times. I'm gonna say we don't have to read flashbacks if you don't want to. Refuse to cooperate. Celeste. Okay. Can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Please, just get this over with. When I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because... 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 Because of the wonderful things he does! You never know what might happen! <laughs> Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go right. over the case again. Ah, uh, here we go. And show oh, those are the closing problems. arguments. Yep. Sounds like it. This uh, is... Bring everything yep. to an end. Time for... Come on, make a manga. <laughs> Closing argument. Begin. All right. All right. <laughs> just love these. I just love this art. That should be Hifumi. I know. Ah, which is right one. there. Well, there's like, yeah. Hack okay. two. The clock. Uh, hold on. Crystal uh, ball. Double check. It has nothing to do with crystal ball. I think it's the clock. Like the two, it's yeah, two yeah. o'clock. Yeah, check the one a.m. Uh, this should be the camera. Camera. It's all the way on the end. Yeah, the camera's down there. Not this one. Yeah, there you go. Talk's watch. Then he takes out Taka. Alright. Just the camera's four. The fourth camera, yeah. What this one? Yep, the photo. Show the photo. Library. Just hammer two. Just hammer number two. And then this, this should be this should be the third hammer, right? Uh, make sure there's not one of him just smearing blood on himself. Yeah, I don't do it. Be the third hammer, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, and then the one like on Scott. That is a. Yep. What's that? The, that's, that's the. And clunk. Her thumb. And that's exactly what happened. There we go. And clunk. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was. <laughs> he flew me. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. <laughs> just that one panel of him just like. I know. <laughs> First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. Uh, that hey, does this smell like chloroform? Was hero. <laughs> the I don't know. I don't know. Let me smell it real quick. Prime <laughs> so when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out. And stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. <laughs> Looking like fucking Sideshow Bob. Click, click. 
cybernetics, he fully positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him. While the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. Quote unquote. They did all the this assault. just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at precisely 6 602, they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. Hey, Kiba! And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason hammer number four was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. Hmm. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that, but... While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. Wait a second, does that say Justice Hummer? And Justice Hammer 3? It does! Yeah. Hummer! Oh my god. No! Yeah, it does. <laughs> you know what? I find that funny. <laughs> I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad. Did that just say donk? <laughs> Probably. Quick, to the Justice Hummer. The other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. Flip, flip, flip. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He's he just doing the tarp, Mr. Crab walk. Dolly to move it all the way down <laughs> to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Dun, dun, dun. All along, we <laughs> kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is. Lust. Unnecessary transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Celeste, sorry, you lose. Complete. Complete. I lost. I lost. When was the last time I was 
forced to utter such words. They hang heavy around my neck. Then you admit it? You're the killer? Hm. <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge. As if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no, Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Taiko? So, you yeah. finally Truth accept. comes out. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Thankfully, we had the bullet time battle early on. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes. That's that. Mm. Celeste was the killer. Yeah. The blackened. Mastermind. All right. She organized the whole thing. Yep. Nice. More nice. money. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or no, I suppose this is the end, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote. Okay. Okay. If you okay. would, okay. please okay. locate your lever and cast your vote. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? A B? <laughs> oh, not the bees! <laughs> oh god, not the bees! Not the bees! Hey. Yay! Well, it's basically a formality at this point, but once again, you are totally correct. A black in this time, the true killer who devised the whole stinking scheme was... Celestia Lunenberg! Or, more precisely, Taiko Yusuhiro! Woohoo! Yes. I lost. Well, that sucks. Well, that stinks. I guess trying to work with someone else's mistake after all. Hifumi's an empty is beyond all my calculations. I knew it. They I really did it. approach me with this plan. But how did you get him to agree? I can't imagine he would have happily agreed to commit murder. Hmm. I'm sure she relied on her specialty. Lying. <laughs> my specialty? Don't make me laugh. I didn't have to lie to get him to agree. So then. Then did you use. you know. <laughs> I knew you'd figure it out, Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get Hifumi to act as my accomplice, mm -hmm. I used. her. Mm -hmm. For everyone who's still left, I'll avoid mentioning it by name, but. It was one thing Hifumi and Taka were both super into. Does she mean Alter Ego? Is she talking about Alter Ego? Say what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Don't Just worry about it. Don't interrupt. <laughs> we're in the middle of a very important conversation here. Just stop talking. Shut up. I'm totally out of the loop. Oh, as usual. How oh, sad! In other words... Then you're the one that stole it. Indeed. That's right. That's right. I see. And you used it to drag you boom me into the plan you'd come up with? <laughs> right again. Last night, after we had our meeting about how it disappeared, I paid he me a little visit. Oh, um, what are you doing here? Actually... I was hoping I could talk to you. Alone. It is about what was stolen. I know who did it. What? Are you okay with this? It was Taka. He stole it. <laughs> <laughs> what? So <laughs> And I have proof. Would you like to see it? As it turned out, I found a use for the digital camera. 
I'd taken you know what to Taka's room earlier and took pictures of it there. I deleted the picture as soon as I'd shown it to Hifumi, of course. Damnation! So it was him! But how did he do it? She was supposed to yell if either of us got close to her! <sighs> you are correct. Which is why Taka forced me to steal it. Say what? As for me... Please forgive me. He... He threatened me. Oh, um... He... He did. As for me... I don't know how to feel about this. He, he came to my room last night unannounced and then... It's hard for me to even say... He... Abused me. What? Oh, well, no. And he... He took pictures. He said if I do not do as he asked, he would show them to everyone. So I... I had no choice. Damnation! That's a crime! An absolute crime! He... I mean, I knew he'd gone a little crazy, but... I never imagined he would, would go that far! <laughs> it was amazing how completely he bought it. Can't express how enjoyable that was. <laughs> Back to the I was about to say something I've never said before in my life. Completely unforgivable! I'm going to kill him! I'm going to fucking kill him! Most unfortunate. Wait, please. If you go now, you will be playing right into his hands. Hmm? Actually... Taka is planning to use her... to escape. And he has made you his target. What? Escape? You don't mean... <sighs> Taka is going to try to kill you. <laughs> Indeed. That noise. <laughs> all, so he can, and also he can keep her to himself. This is yeah. unforgivable. The bastard. Completely bastard, 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 bastard. I was avoiding making the sound part too. <laughs> can we allow him continue with these barbaric acts? Too easy. Absolutely not! How could I? She... She... I swear! I will save her! Actually... Then... Would you like to join with me? It just so happens I have come up with a plan. <laughs> I have devised a way to reclaim what, is, what he has stolen and escape this dreadful school. <laughs> And with that, and with that, it is complete. Hmm? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> if we agreed without a second thought, the effect that item had on you was remarkable. The power of love. Even if love is twisted as that can still drive people mad, it would seem. Uh, um. You disgust me. I see. I have another question for you. Was that strange costume of Fumi's creation? Indeed. Yeah, it was a real pain in the butt, too. All I asked him to do was make something to hide the face and general body size. I had no idea he'd make something like that, but it's my fault for picking him in the first place. But... So, why'd you decide to make me the suspect? Because you're stupid. <laughs> oh, poor thing. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> as simple as that, man. <laughs> and in that regard, I made the right choice. So glad your stupidity surpassed my every expectation. <laughs> Damn. Life must have been tough on your parents, though. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Don't be yes. mean. <laughs> I feel like I cry. You gotta get those last few shots, I guess. Well. But when you were explaining your plan to Hifumi, how did you explain the part about him playing dead? <laughs> what, she, what she's asking is, what was Hifumi supposed to do after that, assuming you would actually let him live? Are you okay with this? That's simple. After he did his part, 
and pretended to be dead once someone showed up. I told him to say he'd been seriously wounded. He was on the verge of death, but he just barely held on. Hmm. And he really believed that? <laughs> well, of course. That wasn't all there was to it. As I explained it to Hifumi, the plan was... While you were all questioning him about what had happened to him, I was going to murder someone else. At that point, Hifumi would have an alibi so nobody could doubt it. I told him that and he believed it. Hmm. It all seems very straightforward. Stereotypical. Hmm. I just matched the lie to the level of the opponent. In fact, Hifumi ate it up. He believed the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end... So you had planned to kill him all along. So in the end... <laughs> but of course... There would have been no point in my plan if the one who pretended to be dead did not end up dead himself. What the heck? How can human life mean so little to you? Well... That's a non-issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be mean! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> now you sound like Yakuya. I wonder about that. No, he derives his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are nothing alike. Why? And then, what made you take things this far? What the heck? Was it really just for money? Hmm. Are you talking about the $10 million Monokuma offered us? That is a lot of money, it's true. <sighs> but that's not all there is to it. Hmm. From the moment our new life here began, my only thought has been escape. But... But... All along, you've been saying how we have to accept living here. You little bitch! <laughs> there it is. Obviously, that was a lie! Hey! <clears throat> I couldn't take it! I hated it from day one! More than anyone, anyone, ANYONE else in here! You little bitch! I wanted to get out! Every day was fresh torture! And you want to know why, huh? This is fine. Because I had a dream. And accepting life here would have meant nothing less than giving up on my dream forever. Honestly. And there was no way that I could ever do that. In the underground world of gambling, I risked my life to make a metaphorical killing. As for me. And it was all for that dream. What was this dream of yours? Isn't it wonderful? To live in a European castle. A castle? <laughs> and to gather handsome men from all over the world to serve as my butler slash bodyguards. Huh. I was going to make them dress up like vampires and satisfy my every need. Oh my god. Living my life. <laughs> Once I obtained that, I would have created a perfectly aesthetic world of decadence. This is fine. Living the rest of my life there is my only dream, my only goal. That's what life is all about. <laughs> <sighs> Combined with my own winnings, Monokuma's $10 million would have made that dream a reality. I got right to the edge, but... There is nothing to be done. Unfortunately, my dream has been scattered in the wind. Still, I don't have any regrets. I pursued my dream till the very end, so why would I? Just the worst. You sound so passionate, but you were really able to kill your own friends for it. Oh. Are you asking me to feel guilty? That's a pointless endeavor. I think nothing of sacrificing others for my own ends. I feel nothing. Do you understand? That's all there is to me. That's what makes me complete. <laughs> Isn't it terrifying how different our values are? There's simply no room for understanding. What is this? That's what we should be saying. And plus, how can you be so calm? Don't you realize you're about to die? Why are you scared? <laughs> My ability to lie is unrivaled, and I take pride in that. It's not just other people. I can even fool my own emotions. The conscious deceives the unconscious. 
That's why you're not scared? Yes, indeed. That's right. I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. <sighs> but you know, if I could be reincarnated... If I had a choice, then... Isn't it wonderful? I think I would like to come back as Marie Antoinette. You know, someone who's famous for being executed. Hey. Exactly. You just get executed again. <laughs> Celeste smiled then. When she did, it looked to me like a poor effort to force it. She claimed she could fool her own feelings. That statement itself must have been her final lie. That weak, fake smile, what betrayed her? Kills! 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 <laughs> you all done? Then let's get a rolling! The black can disturb the peace and must pay the price! Now then, I prepared a very special punishment! For <laughs> the ultimate gambler! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Oh boy! I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. What? This is... Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Which is why... Actually, it's not important. Well then... Take care, everyone. Perhaps we'll meet again. Oh. In another life. Hmm. And muting my mic. And in the end, she dropped the act. Oh boy. of the Versailles Witch. I'm helping. <laughs> you, can see oh, her, you, you can see her corpse in the background. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So, uh... Couldn't even get a dignified ending. Just gets cartoonishly smashed by a fucking fire truck. I mean, it was cartoonish up until the fire truck showed up. <laughs> <laughs> So what is that? Leave those seven now? <laughs> seven left. Yep. Seven left. It's over. Third execution is over. Celeste's death is over. Celeste killed my friend, so I can't pity her, but I also can't deny that at one point I consider her a friend too. Him to just come along and hmm. this isn't just awful. One could cut free of their regrets from the outside world, and some more people had to die. Extreme! <laughs> you guys are still young! You need to place more value on your lives! What are you gonna do? Jeez. And here I thought you guys were gonna pass the torch of hope to the next generation. <laughs> Let me out of here! What do I care about hope? I'll throw it in the trash if you just let me out of here. Too bad. Uh, too bad. You're all the embodiment of 
hope, whether you like it or not. And it is my destiny to knock you down, one by one. It's sad. Yes, it is. But that reality just can't be avoided. Don't talk like you're not responsible. How long are you going to make us keep going through this? What do you want from us? <laughs> God, I am so remember, sick of people that asking zoom me zoom that. Zoom. Give it a remember rest already. Zoom. Remember that one zoom in where it just went, Yes, there. That's all. <laughs> hmm. So anyway... Kyoko! Did I see you get some kind of key-type object from Celeste? Hey! Hey! So, uh... What's the deal with that? Wah -wah? Huh? What's the matter? So then... I'll answer your question if you answer mine. You... What did you do? What did you do to me? Ooh. What? Hey. Answer me. What did you do to my body? Ooh. How exciting. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh man. Oh jeez. What do you mean? What did I do? I, I have no idea. I don't know anything about it. Um, what was that just now? Master Mind did something to Kyoko's body? What does that mean? Well, uh, okay, uh, things are getting kind of awkward. I think it's about time I got out of here. Well? Meanwhile, you guys can go on and enjoy your school life. If you get lonely, give me a shout. Not that I'll do anything about it, of course. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Monokuma disappeared, leaving us all depressed and in despair. Though it wasn't all despair, it was one small hope. Hmm. Hey, Kyoko, Monokuma already mentioned it, but where's that key that Celeste So... Most likely. It's the key to one of the dressing room lockers. Huh? What? Then that means... So let's probably hit it in there. Oh, yeah. Right. I suppose sometimes it's easiest to miss what's right beneath your nose. Well, then we'd better go check. Indeed. Good idea. Yeah. Left the courtroom and rushed to the dressing room. We approached the dressing room. Yoko looked back at us and said, I'm going to go on alone from here. Everyone else head to the dining hall. I'll check in with you later. What? Why exactly are you going alone? So... Do you even have to ask? As she spoke, she glanced quickly at the surveillance camera. Come on. That's not what I mean. Why you? There's still the risk of a spy, you know. Then I'll go too. What? You? Please, let me go. Standing here arguing is just going to draw more attention to us. Goodbye. Do whatever you want. Thank you, Yaku. Well, then. Then it's up to you now. Yo. I'm gonna go to the dining hall, okay? Huh? <laughs> oh, Makoto no. and Yoko are gonna go... Don't get together. any ideas. <laughs> Uh, does that mean what I think it means? Just no. go back to your dorm and just or eat even your better. You, know you know what? I think she's supportive. <laughs> I think she's supportive. The short yeah, answer she, yeah, she's like, she's, uh, she's like, she's in it for us. <laughs> All right. I like, I like her. She's great. <laughs> she's all for it. The short answer is no. The long answer is no. No. <laughs> Your mind's telling you no, but your body's saying yes. Yeah. Short answer. Good luck, Makoto. No, the short answer. The short answer is no. The long answer is the spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck, Makoto. It's like our total pushovers. I was going to read that. I'll let you show a little backbone later. <laughs> then you show a little backbone. I was gonna whisper that part actually. <laughs> Sorry. 
I'll give her some. I'll give her some back. <laughs> Hello, Monokuma. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <laughs> what was that just now? <laughs> I tried to forget what Tina said. Everyone headed to the dining hall, leaving me and Kyoko there alone. Shall we go? Well, shall we? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so then. We need to get into that locker. Yoko took the key Celeste had given her and unlocked the locker. As the locker swung open, we saw... Ta-da! Ta -da. Good morning. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? Oh. It's safe. Thank goodness. Never heard Kyoko sound so relieved. It's like she was speaking from the bottom of her heart. I did just what Celeste asked. I didn't say a word. I stayed quiet the entire time. No. Oh, and... I think I might be able to open the last set of files soon. Maybe as early as tomorrow. I'm doing my best, so please wait just a while longer. <laughs> so now we can officially say the case is closed. As far as this incident is concerned, sure, but can we take a second? If we have this opportunity, I want you to be honest. Yoko, please tell me, what are you trying to do all on your own here at the school? You. Is that why you wanted to come here with me? However... Regardless, that's not something you need to know right now. I don't need to know. It just makes me even more worried. What? Worried? Like what happened during the investigation this time? It disappeared and we didn't see you again. Without warning, without explanation. When you do that. It's only natural that they think I'm the mastermind spy, right? And you too. No! I. I believe in you. What? You believe. in me? Okay, I believe you. <laughs> yes. You fucking what? <laughs> You fucking what? You fucking you what? Fucking... No, not like that. I don't talk like that. Isn't it obvious? People believe in their friends, right? That's why I want you to tell me. And I want you to believe in me too. Because we're friends. I understand. It's true. Then maybe I can believe in you. Just a little bit more. Then well, it's progress. Fine, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I've been disappearing and where I've been going. You see... Hmm. What I heard from Kyoko then was... Frankly, it kind of blew my mind. Right after I told Kyoko I believe in her, <laughs> she told me a story that was well, almost unbelievable. So I, I had to confirm what she told me with my own two eyes. So I waited, so I waited for nighttime to come. When it did, went into action. Correct. The boys' bathroom on the second floor doesn't have a surveillance camera or monitor in it. And in the storage closet there. Way in the back. She said it was way in the back of the boys' bathroom storage closet, but... Joko really be right about this. Hmm. Let's let's investigate. Well. Hmm. It's just a normal storage closet, as far as I can tell. The secret Kyoko told me about. Could really be hidden here? Oh, well, one way to find out. That it was way in the back of the storage closet. But I mean, seriously? Without Looks thinking, like a I floor. without thinking, I placed I mean, my hand on the back of the storage closet. And suddenly, as if I were being yanked in... Ah! Uh, uh, At the same time as I heard that sound, I fell through the wall. I had no idea what was going on. Ba-bum! Ba -bum. Oh, oop. Let's not make it. Let's not make any noises now. <laughs> I had fallen through the back of the storage closet. Huh? Turned out, the back wall was like a revolving door. I had made my way to the other side. Just like Kyoko had said. Correct. In the boys bathroom on the second floor, the, uh, yep, same thing. I'm Secret. saying the same thing. Remember it this time, Makoto. 
I know you're a, I know you're a dunce, but you've grown on me a little bit. God, I'm gonna have to talk to you here about these memory problems. <laughs> no, it has no, it has nothing to do with what Hira has been giving you. Trust me, I know all about that. Well, this is the secret room. Suddenly, Kyoko the telepath. No, <laughs> trust me. I know all. I know all about Kyoko's dealings. Not Kyoko's <laughs> type of me. Hero. Sorry. Uh, I've been sorry. Makoto, just between you and me, I. Hero's been hooking me up too. <laughs> oh man, she's she's into that shit too. Oh man. This is the secret. Shh. Go you gotta relax up, all right. <laughs> What's in here? Well, let's see. Bunch of files and what looks like volume after volume of yearbooks. We're all covered in dust. And everything, one file at the edge of the bookshelf caught my eye. Hope Speak Academy student register. Hmm. The only thing in here not covered in dust. Someone been looking at it recently. Let's put the file into my hand. Before I had a chance to look at it, a slip of paper fell out of the file and I turned my attention to it. What's this? You must not leave. That's kind of weird. I understand if it said, like, I can't leave, but you must not leave? What is this? My head feels funny. Strange sensation. Like, deja vu. Like I've been in this place before. God damn it. <laughs> oh, come on. You didn't think I was going to do that? I know. I was going to, like, oh, he's going to make that. <laughs> that's low hanging fruit. And that's why I didn't <laughs> say anything. It's like, okay, nobody's going to say it. Did you really think he would pick the low hanging fruit there? Uh, <laughs> More <Morris>. initial D. <laughs> You must not leave. I've seen <laughs> those them. words in the 90s. <laughs> not sure what it meant, but. Seen them somewhere before, but can't quite remember. What do I know? What don't I know? I. I. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, motherfucker. shit. Strange sound rang out through my head. Felt like I was shaking my brain back and forth. And then, darkness. No parents. Don't understand what's happening. <laughs> Don't know what started it. It's all over. With that, I opened my eyes. You know how long it had been. Oh what? man. Yeah. Ow. Apparently something hit me and I lost consciousness. All I understood. No throbbing pain in my head proved that much, at least. Donk! <laughs> Empty bookshelf. Huh? Empty? Gone. It's all Everything. gone! Yearbooks, the student registry, and even the note that had followed on the floor. All gone? What does this mean? But my brain refused to do any more work. An insistent pain in my head began to spread across the rest of my body. For now, I should go back to my room. Get some rest. My body was heavy with pain, my mind heavy with thought. I dragged myself back toward my room. My palms were sweaty, my knees weak, my arms Mom. heavy. Mom's Mom spaghetti. spaghetti. He's nervous. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> but on the surface, he looks calm spaghetti. Somehow I made it back to the first floor of the school. Yeah. The farther I walked, the more I felt. Things are getting blurry. Can't see. In front of me. Didn't stop myself from collapsing right there. After that. Hmm? Hmm? As if from a vast distance I heard a sound. It was faint, but undeniable. The sound. It's coming from the gym? I desperately hauled my shaky frame toward the gym. The sound got stronger and stronger. What's going on? Can't be nothing. You're in the gym? Mm. What is that?
Didn't make a sound as I opened the door to the gym. Sounds coming from inside, meanwhile, only intensify that much more. <laughs> Hi, Kiva! Yeah. Oh shit, they're fu- Yep. Yep. For me, the rage to battle beyond anything humanly possible. No, one side's not human, that's for sure, but... Regardless, I couldn't stop staring. I got to move or even breathe. Why, you? What do you think you're doing? I asked you a question. What's the meaning of this? I would make a Sans joke, but the blue light is on the wrong eye. How dare you defy me? This wasn't part of the deal! The deal? I've made a decision. I will no longer retreat. No longer compromise. No longer regret. I've made my decision. I'm going to resist you. Hmm. Okay. But you do realize what will happen if you go through with this, right? You haven't forgotten, have you? What I'm holding hostage? <gasps> what am I looking at? What am I hearing? A hostage? Then, could it be? Mastermind Spy is... Da -da -da -da. Mm. The end. Seven. Seven remain. Yep. To be continued. Ah, oh, shit. Super Robo Justice. Super <laughs> we got a present. <laughs> Get it? Yes, please. Three's a crowd. And with that, we're going to end things off here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you liked this video, leave a like and a comment. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe and the bell. And we'll see you guys next time. Later. Bye. Bye.